Okay, um, I am going to call the Finance and Operations Committee meeting uh, Tuesday, July 17th, 2018 at 6.35 p.m. at the Nashua High School North Boardroom of the Nashua Board of Education. Um, I'm going to take roll call. Uh, Ms. Porter? Here. Mrs. Oden? Here. Mrs. Oden is filling in for Mr. Moshe today, who's recuperating. Uh, Mr. Garino is here. Mr. Donovan? Here. And uh, so we have a quorum. And our first item on our agenda is Brentwood Security Improvements, which was distributed by Mr. Donovan. No, oh, actually it was not. Um, right. That's fine. I, I distributed a couple of other things, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay. But the... Um, we're not going to discuss the Brentwood security right now. Um, this was something that was added when I was on vacation uh, to the agenda. Um, they did send a proposal out to get information, but I think a group, i.e. the Brentwood staff um, and superintendent and director of special ed and myself need to get together to talk about what we really want um, over there because we have to we have to remember that it's a three-year lease. So some of the some of the items they were looking at, I'm saying, I'm not sure we want to put that much money into a building that we're only going to lease for three years. So I think the group needs to discuss the whole process, and then we'll bring it back to the board probably next month or September, um, I think after everyone agrees on what we really need. Okay? Great. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. <clears throat> That's fine. So that would move us on to item two, which is contracts for special education. Yes. Um, okay. Okay, so there are a number of these. Um, so we'll sort of go through them one by one. Um, a number of these contracts show up each year. Um, there's a few new ones here, but typically there's a, a number... <clears throat> Excuse me. They show up on a on a constant basis, but since they're over ten thousand dollars, they require the the board of ed to approve them. So the first one is with Boothby Therapy Services. Um, this the cost of this is covered by the IDEA grant, and it's for augmentative services for the uh, special ed students. Um, the two t former teachers here can probably talk more about what augmentative services are. I know they augment and help the student. Um, so that uh, the contract is for 30000 That's sort of a not to exceed 30000 That's the same as amount as we had last year um, and the same amount as the year before, actually. So these services are, are needed on a... On a uh, not a constant basis, but a, an off and on basis. So we'll get invoices. Maybe one month we'll get an invoice for some services, and maybe the next month there won't be anybody um, that requires those services. So that is the first one. Um, and let me just speak to the second one, too, before I see if there's any questions on those. The second one is also the IDEA grant. Um, that is a contract with the Carroll Center for the Blind. That's for orientation and mobility training for our blind students. Um, this has a contract amount of 50000 Once again, it's the same as Boothby, where that's a not-to-exceed number. Um, it's, they'll bill us as services are rendered. Um, it's the same as last year, the same amount as last year, and once again, the same amount as the year before. Um, both of these contracts we put in with this not to exceed number and we haven't exceeded the number. It's been, typically it's about seven or $8,000 less, but they do put um, the not to exceed just so they can use it as the uh, needs arise. So are there any questions on those two? Okay, um, the next one is a uh, more significant contract, it is for our physical therapy services. Um, we don't have um, our own internal physical therapy staff. We have been working with this company, ABC Physical Therapy, for since I've been at the, uh, at the district. Um, 
and they, they provide these on an ongoing basis. The people, the therapists that work with our students, they've been working with our students year after year. Most people think these therapists actually do work for the district because they're in the buildings all the time, but they're not officially employees of the district, they're employees of ABC Physical Therapy. Um, the increase this year, um, the contract amount for this year is 225. Once again, that's a not to exceed, though occasionally this one does get exceeded. Um, last year, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a 1.8% increase over last year's number, which was 221,000. Um, now they're, they're, they also have an hourly rate. If you look at that contract, they have a, a two-page contract attached to our contract. Um, and their, their hourly rate went up 1.8%. Uh, no, actually it went up 3%, which I may speak with them to see if that can be changed slightly, but it's 3% increase over last year for the hourly rate. And it's sort of a time used thing. They'll charge us as they use the services. As I said, they're in the buildings all the time. They use, we use a lot of services. The way the contract with them works is once it reaches 225,000, which typically we do reach a max with this contract sometime in June, and then they'll reach out to the um, special ed department and say, if we, we need more services, we have to finish up. Um, but I think it's a good practice to work with a group like this to sort of keep track of it as the year goes on so it just doesn't become, we're gonna give the services whether the student needs them or not. And I'm not saying they do that, but it's, I think it's just a good practice that we have sort of a not to exceed number, and then when we get there, they work with the special ed department. The amount ab above that either gets charged if special ed has money in their operating budget, the amount over 225 would get charged there, or we have a special revenue account where we bring in, we have some students from out of district they come into some of our schools, more of our special ed programs typically. So there are funds available and any excess gets charged there. Um, that number is ranged from like 5,000 to maybe 15,000 a year. Uh, Mrs. Oden. Uh, thank you. I was just gonna ask, is it, does that 225 come out of the IDEA grant? No, that is in the operating budget. Okay, thank you. I have a question. It says budget available 180,000 and contract amount 225,000. So the contract is not to exceed 225,000. Is that is that what it is? It is. That okay. budget available number I is not I don't think that number is correct. Um, we added another $70,000 to this account and I don't think it was updated on the correct line. Okay. So that that should say budget available 225,000. Yes. Okay. Yes, it should. I have, I have a question about, um, you, you, you bundled all these contracts together, um, so that, that's just to streamline it and make it easier, is that, is that why, you, I noticed you did that before too. Um, yeah, when it's contracts of a like type like this, where they're all special ed contracts, sometimes right. we'll, we'll do, that, do it that way. I mean, way. I have no problem with it, yeah. I'm just, in case some, some of the people might have some questions about that. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they, I, I, you know, they might <coughs> take, you know, ha have to go through this eight times. I, I think it's easier to go through it once myself. I think it's good the way you do it, but I just wanted to, wanted to uh, get, you know, uh, get an idea about that. So, okay. Um, so the next one is Maxim. Okay, Maxim Healthcare Services. Uh, this is for nursing services for special ed students, mostly for the sort of the one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two type students. We do have nur a nurse in each school, and they'll deal with the general population. Mm -hmm. This is for some students that require more significant nursing needs. Mm -hmm. So we don't have full-time employees to cover those people. We'll have. Um, we'll use a nurse from one of these services. And sometimes those nurses will be in the building frequently. Um, if the student were to leave, obviously, the, uh, there'd be no need for the service. Um, so 
That's maximum, and, and the one behind it is interim health care. That's basically the same thing. Um, there's not a lot of nurses sort of out there that aren't already working. Um, there are some nurses that don't want to work a full-time job, so they'll sign up with these services and they'll work a few days a week. And so that's what we've used. Occasionally, there is a student that's very close to a nurse or something like that, and that nurse would be with that student all the time. But a lot of the the one-on-one -on -one type nurses or one on a small amount of students are nurses from these two um, companies. Uh, Ms. Porter? And what, um, what budgets are these coming out of? These are also from the operating budget, both okay. of these. Thank you. And basically, it's uh, $58 an hour for an RN, and I think it's a couple dollars less for an LPN. And that's the same price as we were charged last year. Okay, the next two, um, one of which doesn't necessarily need to be on here because it's under 10,000, but since it's on here, we'll speak to it because it's, the contracts are with the Micro Society Charter School and the Academy of Science and Design. So they're both charter schools. We probably have another small one with, um, what's the other charter school? The, the, yeah, the one in Merrimack, the arts. Arts uh, Charter School, I can't remember the exact name of it, but basically, if a special ed student goes to one of these charter schools, we're required to provide para support if necessary for that student. Um, so basically, what, the, what, what we did the first year was we would sort of send a para over part of the time, and the para would spend part of a day with the student, and that became a little bit difficult to manage. Um, so now we have agreements with the charter schools themselves. They hire the employees, and then they bill us monthly for the time spent with the student that the Nashua School District is responsible for. Um, so, so uh, um, these students, you probably, that's probably not your, um, probably not, not in your um, uh, department, but these students are not charter school students, they're, they're public school students, but they go to the charter school? Well, they're Nashua residents right. who go to one of the charter schools. So the school district is responsible to provide the para support for a special ed student with an IEP that goes to a charter school. So, so they went through the whole process of, of getting in the lottery and getting accepted to the schools, taking the test and everything else? They, yeah, I mean, ASD is a lottery. I think Micro Society, I don't think, was a lottery originally. I don't okay. I think they just needed some students. I'm not sure of the status at this point. Um, so, so they pass all the criteria of go, getting into the charter schools, but, but they're special ed students. They have IEPs. And so, so, that, so the charter school isn't responsible for these costs. It, it comes back to the... Yes. It comes back to the district. Exactly. Okay. Ms. Porter. Do they have special ed teachers or just parents? Um, Micro Society has a special ed teacher, a case manager, mm -hmm. um, and that cost is shared between us, and um, that's the Micro Society. As you can see, the Academy of Science Design number is very low. Mm -hmm. um, there's fewer special ed students at that school. So we don't have any special ed teachers going to the charter school? No, not, not, okay. not now. Um, okay. Because I believe the, the Academy of Science and Design is a small number, so it's probably just some para support for some one couple of students maybe with, I, I, I mean, I don't know what, what their needs probably, are. Okay. All right. So they're on the case manager. Yes, but the case there. manager with the micro society, we split the cost. Okay. Thank you. And those are both um, those are both costs in our operating budget. Mm -hmm. But you know that's another thing when people talk about special education expenses. Okay, you got to provide these services. A charter school opens up. That student may have been able to deal with the existing para force that we have, but since they moved to another school, we've got to provide right. more services. Right. And, and that's by law, probably. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Okay. That's what the special ed people tell me. I have not <laughs> yeah, read the yeah, law no, myself. I, I know it might not be in your in your department. Yeah. Yes. Though you know, I, they're not. They don't want to spend money that we. So where does the money come from that their the micro society is paying their part and the district is paying our part? They are funding. They they hire the person and then right, they but just. Where where is the money coming from that they're paying? From them, yeah. I'm sure. From their operating budget. Does part of that come from the school district? Uh, no, no? Their, okay. their charter schools are funded by an amount from the state each year. From the state. So they get so much money as state, but I would suggest that the money that the state sends isn't enough to keep right. a charter school alive. They need to find other ways to fund things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and then the, um, the last one listed there is literacy learning solutions. And this is to provide Orton-Gillingham tutoring for a few students. Now that, my understanding is that is that's a reading program. Mm -hmm. um, we had a few students that for one reason or another um, fell way behind in their reading skills, their special ed students. I believe um, the solution to, the, to the, the problem, so to speak, was to use this Orton-Gillingham um, and you have to be certified in it to use it. It just can't be anyone that teaches the program, so thus the cost. Now, the thing that special ed has decided to do this year, they've, they've, there, I believe there's five or six teachers that are taking the training, mm -hmm. so they won't be done until later this year, I think. Right. Uh, so we'll still have the cost this year, but I think going forward, if we have the five or six teachers, it doesn't guarantee, it depends on where the student is, the right. teacher might be right. at a different school, but at least it does give us um, some cost savings uh, going forward. So um, yeah, I guess this program sort of a very specific um, program. So that's what that is. That is also an operating budget. So item. that's a teacher who goes to the student? Yes, this is a, exactly. So they would travel to where the students Right. Are. Okay. Right. Okay, and then when I was reviewing this, when I got back from vacation on Monday, I noticed that not included in the packet was the largest of the invoices, oh, okay. and, I, and that's, that's what I gave that's you. One that that's you one of the things yeah. I gave you a copy of. Okay. And that is for our, for Clark Associates. Um, Clark Associates is the they do the occupational therapy for our students. Um, as you can see, it's a significant amount. Um, it's eight hundred and forty three thousand um, dollars. That's an increase over last year of sixty five thousand um, dollars which percentage-wise isn't that high, but it's still a fairly significant number. As I had mentioned before with the ABC, um, the, uh, the occupational therapy, we did increase the budget between those two. I think it was $75,000. Um, we just have more students that require these services. Um, they increased... Their hourly rate is only a 1.8% increase, which sort of falls within sort of a 2% number. So I think from that point of view, it's fair. Um, and um, as, I, as I said, with the, uh, the I mean, the physical therapy, the occupational therapy is the same. These are people that have been working with some of our students year after year after year. They're also sort of looked at as part of the, um, part of the, the district. Um, and the reason I kind of bring that up was a few, couple of years ago, we took a look and said, okay, is there a way, since these costs keep increasing, is there a way can, we can try to either bring our own people in and do the work or find someone else to do this? There's not lots of companies out there that could provide services for such a large district like us. Um, and the cost of bringing in our own people would be more expensive than this when you throw the benefits on top. Um, now, might that change at some point in time? Is it worth looking at again? Probably. Um, so I think maybe before I bring this back next year, maybe we can take a look at that. 
but I think with the changeover in the special ed department, I really don't think there's you know significant num people moving in and out of that department this year. I really don't think uh, having them spend time going through a process like this probably makes sense this year. Is so, this also operating budget? Yes, this is operating budget also. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. Does anybody else have any questions uh, on these contracts? Do we need to approve them? Or um, you want to wait to the end? Sure. We can entertain a motion to approve nine special ed contracts to the full board for approval. Okay, so a motion to approve the nine contracts presented by Mr. Donovan on Tuesday, July 17th. Do we need to list all of them, do you think? No? Okay. I would just say approve nine contracts. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could, maybe you could mention that on the memo dated July 11, 2018. That oh, yes, okay, yep, yep. On the memo dated July 11th, okay, and presented on July 17th. It was July, uh, it was pres is the memo? Is 2018, okay. 2018. Tuesday, Tuesday, 17. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, so dated, uh, motion to recommend nine special ed contracts dated July 11th, 2018. In the, in the July 11th memo. Dated. That's what he right. said. He said it was in the July 11th memo. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, from the July 11th memo. Okay. Yeah. Motion to recommend nine special ed contracts dated July 11th. Um, Tuesday, July, to the full board for approval. Okay. Okay. Um, on the motion, um, Ms. Porter, Ms. Porter? Yes. Ms. Uh, Zoden? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Uh, motion carries three to zero. Okay. Okay. That's going to go here. Our next item on the agenda is Title I Lease First Church. Mr. Donovan? Okay, this is a lease uh, we've been using the first church. I'm not sure if you've been there yet, but for our preschool, um, for the Title I students, um, we've been there for a number of number of years since, since I've been here, so longer, probably 10 or 12 years at least at this point. Um, this is exactly the same lease as last year, the, except for the rate, the word wording, et cetera, is the same. The... Um, Insurance requirements are the same. Um, all in all, I think we've had a good relationship with the First Church over the years. Um, you know, we provide them a little bit of income towards their church, and um, we get the use of the space. Um, and all in all, I think it's worked out pretty well. These, the cost for this lease um, gets charged to the Title I grant. Mm -hmm. um, so the Increase this year. Last year it was forty-six thousand two hundred, and this year it's forty-eight thousand oh seventy-two. So there is a an increase, but it's been a fairly steady increase each year, um, which probably covers essentially the increased costs of utilities and things. Um, we have at times discussed moving this to another place, but um, for a while we were looking at. If we moved central office to the um, court building, would there be room in there and a few other things? But at this point, there aren't a lot of other options for a program like this. So the insurance is in addition to that amount? To the yeah, but the insurance there. doesn't cost us anything because we, okay. we have blanket coverage from the city. Oh, okay, good. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Donovan regarding the lease? Okay, so Okay, so I move to accept the Title I lease at First Church for the Title I nursery. Um, 
presented uh, on Tuesday, July 17th, 2018. Do we have to say for the amount in the yeah. Okay, in the amount of $48,072. And, and, uh, and the, to present to the, recommend to the recommend full board. Recommend to the full board for the time periods from September 1st, 2018 to August 31st, 2019. September 1st. Okay, I uh, second the motion. <coughs> uh, on the motion, um, Ms. Porter? Yes. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Motion carries three to zero. Okay, next on the agenda is transfer report, June fiscal year 2018. Okay, so the transfers, a few, uh, f fewer than the last couple months since most of the entries made by the schools are done sort of in the March, April, May time period. Um, so the first couple, um, our entries were, for example, um, the first one, we moved 107000 from the heating fuel account where it was obvious that we had extra money this year. Um, and we moved it to out-of-district tuition, which I've talked about a lot. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was probably for a May invoice, because um, I'll talk more about the out-of-district when I get to the forecast in a minute. And then the telephone cost. There were some telephone bills that needed to be paid. The telephone bill, um, the, the line this year was higher than it was last year. So I'm, I'm a little concerned. I did, we really need to spend some time and, you know, we need to work with IT on this. But, you know, director's been out for on medical leave for a few months now. But we, we got to get to the point where we were supposed to save money on the phone mm -hmm. with the new system. Right. And we spent more money than we did last year. So I think we sort of got the new phone system in, that's great, but now we got to cut out a lot of these lines. I don't know how much it's going to save, but um, the reality was we had to move some money to pay the, pay the bills. Um, and the next one is also pretty much the same thing. We took a little 3500 from the heating fuel and we paid for advertising. That's another account that I'll talk a little more about later, but we overran that budget. Uh, the next one um, is the same thing. It was another $1,400 worth of advertising that showed up late, and we had to cover that because that account had overrun at the time. We could, If we had known it, that th those two entries could have been put together. Okay, then the next one is from Ledge Street School. Uh, those They had about $6,000, well, exactly $6,000 in their supply accounts, their office and ed supplies that they did not spend, so they used it to purchase some furniture. Uh, and they had spoken to me during the year, and I said if I had any extra money, I'd help them out, but as it turns out, mm -hmm. I don't. Um, so they used some money that they didn't spend during the year on supplies. Okay, the next one is um, the CTE program. Um, and basically, when the director at the South School, Miss Dustin, retired, she retired, I think, at the end of March. Uh, so we only had one director. She was relatively new. She had only started, I think, in November. So we brought in this uh, gentleman, Mr. Gruby, um, and he helped work with her to get the, the, um, the grant uh, the Perkins grant done and a couple of other things. So he's an experienced CTE person from the state. So he stepped in. So basically we took sort of some of the money that we saved with Marianne leaving earlier in the year and used it to help Amanda get through the, the spring mm -hmm. on a couple of items. And uh, then there's one from Dr. Crisp and uh, basically they took supplies and they bought some furniture too. 
I think it was cubbies and things like that to upgrade one of the classrooms. So those are the those are the final transfers of this school year. Anybody have any questions on on the transfers? Do we do we? Uh, I know that sometimes we 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 move to recommend for approval. Should, should we, do we need to? You do should that? because there's if you have one over uh, ten thousand dollars. I okay. think five thousand actually. You should so you should approve the report because okay. there's a couple of large ones in there. Okay. Okay. I move to accept the transfer report dated June two thousand eighteen. There's no dollar amount for this, right? We just no. You don't have yeah, to list the dollar amount. Okay, on the uh, motion, I second the motion. Um, on the motion, Mrs. Ms. Porter? Yes. Uh, Ms. Oden? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Motion carries three to zero. Okay. All right, our next item agenda is the June fiscal year 2018 financial report. Okay, might I suggest that instead of going through two things, we'll take that spreadsheet I sent you, which is the forecast, which will basically be going over the same thing that the um, financial report would plus, plus more. Mm -hmm. So this is um, the latest. Let me sort of update you on where we stand when it comes to closing the year. Most of the costs are now in. Um, the only things that aren't in is the summer payroll for the teachers, and I'll speak to that in a minute. Um, there might be a few sort of expense report items where people have incurred an expense or travel or something like that, and they haven't passed it in, but they have until the end of this week to do that. It's not going to be a lot of money, but there's a few of those. There's possibility there's still a few utility bills, because as we know, you get the utility bills sort of partway through the month. I think we've got most of those in, but there might be a few left. Um, and there could be, as there always is, a few what I call late invoices, invoices that either the vendor doesn't send on time or they get lost, or but there would be for costs during this school year. So we want those costs to hit this budget. I mean, basic accounting says get the costs into the year that they belong in. You can't sort of just, it's not like at home where you don't want to pay it, you put it aside and you pay it later. We, whether we pay it or not, it's not important. Whether we get it in the books is what's important. So um, looking at this sheet, if we sort of key in on the columns um, where one says summer, and then it says actual year to date, and then encumbrance, and then remaining. So those are the sort of the columns we're going to look at. So the first set of accounts, the salary and wage accounts. Sort of interesting that when you look at the percent used at the bottom of that, it's 99.99%. So that assumes that the cost for the teachers this summer is going to be $6 million. Um, the teachers that get paid over the summer receive their first pay on July 5th, and they're getting their next pay on the 19th. So what we're going to do is we'll run the detail from the labor reports on those two, compare them, compare them also to a forecast that I did, and then we'll come up with a number, and we'll book that number four times. So we'll come up with this six million obviously means it would be 1.5 million per payroll. So we'll, but we'll come up with a number a little bit closer. It's going to be around there. It's going to be maybe 25,000, 30,000 less per payroll. I hope. I don't know exactly. But when we finish, we'll go. Like I said, we'll go through the process. We're running this week's payroll tomorrow. The city will be running it tomorrow. So maybe tomorrow afternoon or definitely Thursday morning we'll have the numbers. But assuming that that comes in around six million. It's really kind of interesting that the total payroll this year came out like we spent every penny, just about. That's that, that's $9,000 difference on $84.4 I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. 
So when, when you break it down, take a look at these accounts and break it down, the, there's really, what I look at, there's the first couple of accounts, which are wages full-time, wages part-time, and then there's the wages temp seasonal, and then I'll also, for fun, throw in the longevity account, and then the bottom two, the reductions and attritions and the budget amounts. The budget adjustments, that number, that's like if we didn't have a contract in place when we put the budget together, we put an estimate in, and then when we agreed to the contract, like we did with the teachers this year, that number effectively gets moved up into salaries. But we don't go through, you know, in February and change everybody's salary per person. But so really you get to take that number and put it up. So for example, when you see wages full time, we overran it by 1.1 million. Not really because you've got this 2.1 million in the adjustments that would go up to that. But when you net those accounts that I just mentioned, the six of them together, those are pretty much the accounts were, that include people's pays, people's salaries. Those accounts as a group came out with 364,000 excess in the budget. So that's not a big number based on 84.4 million, but it's a lot better than 9,000, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how much we had left on, on the salaries we paid to all our employees. But the sort of the bad thing that happened this year is if you look at the retirement and separation line, you see that on, under the remaining minus $276,000. We budgeted 800,000, we spent 1,076. So that was $276,000 over the budget. Um, so you factor that in along with the um, the wages, no, the additional hours line, which is 51650. That was over budget by $66,000, the 65,934. That's pretty much, most of that is the costs, the excess costs we incurred um, for summer school, most of it, which was the SPID program. Um, we did bump up the budget this year. To agree with that, we had to take a little bit of it down in June so we could get close. We took about 15000 out. But So when you put those things together, that's kind of what, what nets out, and that's why we ended up so close. Now, usually with all these labor accounts and it being such a big part of the budget, there's a little bit extra in there just because of the we budget in December and then you wait until the next year until all the employees start working. So you got a lot of change turnover. But this year, because we overran that other line, it just made things, made things excessively tight. Now, is it gonna change? Well, like I said, we'll find out about the teacher pay later this week. So I'll know it's not gonna be any higher than six million. It might be a little lower. So I might get some money back there. The other thing, if, for some reason, we don't break even, if, if we have a negative amount at the end of the year, we do have, um, how much, it's, I believe, about $275,000 in a reserve for retirement pay, okay? Because typically we don't spend this much. We set that reserve up a while ago. Um, sort of my second year here, I think we had this huge spike in, in retirement pay. There must have been something happening on the retirement board or something. So we did put some money away for that. Um, so that's something we could always use if we don't end up breaking even. So that just sort of gives you a sense of kind of where we are with those accounts. But since I've been here, it's never been 99.99%. That's kind of <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> Ms. Porter, go ahead. So is that like a capital reserve, the, the retirement? Does that carry over year to year? Yes, it does. It's, so think of it's a, like a balance sheet account. So it's just set aside. <clears throat> exactly. Sort of like a savings account in your okay. home world. It's money that you have put aside. Oh, okay. It's for a specific purpose, i.e. this purpose. You can't use it for other things, but you right. can use it for this. So if you take money out, does it get replenished? Uh, not unless we put it back in. But do you do that? Or? If I... 
The only place I really have it would be if I had extra money here. Mm -hmm. If we had, let's say, 500000 extra, I could go, we, we, the board could agree, we could then go to the alderman and say, we'd like, instead of giving this money back to the city, so to speak, for the reduced taxes, we'd like to put some money back into that reserve in case this were to happen again. Right, because that must be extremely difficult to predict for retirement. It is. It is. Because the... You don't know how many sick days people have. I mean, even if people are giving their notice in February, it doesn't really tell you how much their severance will be. Well, you do for teachers. For teachers. And so we do, but that's only teachers. We don't know about administrators. We right. don't know about any oh. other staff. Okay. Most other staff won't tell you in February. I mean, the only reason the teachers, well, not about the only reason, the teachers are required by contract. Correct. Right. Um, right. And that's a very helpful thing for budgeting because they're the big group. But... This year, we had a couple of senior principals who left. Um, we had, you know, we've been going through our top administrators at central office. <laughs> so, I mean, that costs you money. Now, the reality is if, if, if Garth or Donald were to leave this year, there wouldn't be much money because they haven't been here. So, but we did lose last year and this year. You combine people that have been around a long time. Mm -hmm. And some of those people were, you know, had a lot of sick time and, right. and were higher up on the pay scale. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next set is the fringe benefits. Um, and like I said, the first three columns there, the FICA pension benefits, the difference there is only about 95000 or so, but that amount goes back to the city anyway. They accrue those amounts. They pay everything. There's any any extra cost or anything savings goes back to the city that's not part of our savings for the budget uh, the one that is is the educational assistance um, as you can see under the summer column i've got twenty thousand dollars left i don't think it's going to be that high um, i'm working with uh, denise and hr and we'll be contacting these people because it's like first of all why haven't you asked for the money yet if you've already paid for the course um, but they still have, they have for another week or two to send it in. So, but we'll contact them and maybe they didn't take the course, maybe they didn't finish the course, whatever the case may be. But, so that number will, will change slightly. Okay, uh, the next set of accounts, um, professional technical services. Um, in total, it was 96% used. The the one thing that I didn't get a chance to check, if you look at those accounts, the only one that has really most of the remaining account is the contracted services. I don't know which school slash group had the extra contracted services, but I'll find out and I can report on that when, when I give you my final forecast next month. From my point of view, at least there's some extra money. Where it came from, I'll worry about that later. Okay, then property services. Um, the total for that group of the remaining is 231000 221000 of that is from electricity, heating, gas, and water. So the utilities, we had a good year um, on utilities. Um, and it was kind of interesting. The water, we were told to budget higher from the city because the rates were going to be higher for Penichuk, but it ended up being less this year. So I don't know if our conservation efforts have worked, or it's, I, I don't know exactly what it is on water, but um, we, did, we did save. The heating gas and the electricity, as I said, we, we got good rates on those. Nothing was too crazy this year as far as the weather and things like that. So that's what most of the savings is. And if you go and look at those three accounts under the summer column, you'll see the 35, the 15, and the 8. That's for any late bills coming in. And I do know the water, there is about 8,000 in water. I saw that today. Some of that might be a little bit excess. I don't think we'll have another 50,000 between the other two, but we will have some money. Okay, um, and then the other thing on the rentals, there's 24,000 left. Most of that is wrapping up the whole Brentwood process. Um, the deal we have with the Ceresk is that we pay for all the cost to run the place and fuel and things like that. We haven't got those bills from them yet. So we should get that. I'm hoping that that 24 number isn't necessary. Um, but I know at least some of it is. 
So it's just an estimate at this point. Okay, the other services. Um, as you can see, the very first one, telephone voice, that's all the, all the uh, telephone lines. It, um, $17,000 over the budget. Um, like I said, we budgeted it slightly less this year, knowing we were putting in the, the new phone system and it didn't come out less, it actually came out a little bit more. So that's something that I'm putting on the list and hopefully work with IT, et cetera, to try to figure out something to improve that next year. So is that with the money that you transferred, it's still that much over? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. okay, and then um, most of the other accounts, there's, um, you will see some where it says remaining, some negatives and some positives, but they've, the, the other account, if you look at advertising, the 55, uh, 500 account, that's like $11,000. We never quite, we never quite budget enough there. It's something we don't, we increase it maybe 5,000 a year, but, but I think part of it too is with a lot of turnover we've had at so-called significant positions. You know, if, if, if a second grade teacher leaves, you don't have to put a lot of money into advertising. There's a lot of people out there that want that job. If a superintendent leaves or a CTE director, or there's fewer people, so you really have to cost you more money to get, to get the word out. Um, so that's another account that sort of overrun. Um, when you get down towards the bottom, you'll see the two transportation. There's the regular and the sped transportation. They netted out to $6,000 over budget, which is pretty good. Um, the thing with um, that we've run into more lately with some of the homeless laws and things like that, kids get removed from their household. They're not getting put into foster homes in Nashua now. They're getting moved further out. So we then need to bring those kids back for school. So we're seeing an increase in those costs. Um, and the number of companies that provide that service is dwindling. One of the bigger ones was bought out by somebody else. And um, so that's really where the, the 6,000 overrun, I expected to actually have some savings in the transportation account, but there was probably an extra 80,000 or so for costs that was to transfer kids. Because sometimes they take these kids and they move them 30 miles away and then we gotta bring them back and forth to school every day. And then my favorite account, tuition out of district. You'll notice under summer, I have still $788,000 that I have to pay for tuition out of district. That will be, we'll be paying that over the next week or so. That number may even go higher than that. Um, that's the minimum, I think. I think there's some other invoices that need to be verified. So that shows you, when you look at that group as a whole, it's a minus 768,000 for that group, of which you know 789 of it is, is the tuition out of district. So as I said, we'll put through the 788. There may be even some more invoices. Hopefully I'll have a few other things cleared up so there might be some little more money. Um, and then I still have, I also have, um, special revenue fund that I could charge some of the later out of district invoices to. That account has about 350,000 in it now that's available. I'm not gonna use it all because I need some next year, but I do expect that there's some more money coming into that um, for students that came to our district in the second half of the school year that's probably not paid yet. So I'll have more information on that. But as I said, I think when we sit down to, to look at the budget for fiscal year 20, because this is gonna be another problem next year. We only bumped this account up 200,000. As you can see, it's gonna be over at least 800,000. Um, when we do the budget for 20, I'm gonna suggest that we take a significant increase to out of district. Because uh, this is, if we could get the out of district number higher to where it's only gonna be over by two or 300,000 or something like that, then it makes the budgeting much better. It gives us more flexibility if there's something we wanna try to do. Uh, for example, I'm getting calls already at the high schools for the lots of 
chairs, student chairs that are broken. I, they had to use their own funds this year to do it. They got by, but one of the principals sent me an email. He says, I, you know, I'm going to need more to start the year. He was actually said he used some folding chairs in some of the classes. Those things can't last. Um, so, like I said, that's the issue. That's the issue with this whole budget, really. I mean, everything else, we have some ups and downs year to year. This account for the last few has been over. A, a blessing in disguise, in a sense, next year is in the fall of this calendar year. Um, there's a number of what I call heavy hitters that are aging out. So the second half of next year, the we might for the first time see maybe a little bit of a decrease. You never know, we might have new students come in that keep it as high or goes higher. That's what we've had lately. Um, but we do, the last couple of years, we've had very few kids age out or, you know, they don't have to necessarily age out. Some kids just don't go to school after they're 18 anymore and see you later, they leave on their own. But we haven't had much of that lately. Right. You, you said, uh, I'm sorry, I kind of spaced it a little bit. You said for the Budget year, what were you going to recommend for this? Did you take it out of? No, I think for budget year 20, when we do the budget yep. next time around, yep. I, we really need to increase this budget line item. Oh, okay. Probably by like 600000 or something. Oh, okay, okay. You know, if we can, and, and, you know, we will have in fiscal year 20, we teacher's contract is in place, other paras are in place. We have a lot more, uh, hopefully the principals will be in place. We'll have a lot more definition around our costs going into the year. It's hard to do it like when you don't have, especially a teacher, because it's such a significant part of the budget. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's hard to increase another line and then turn around and say, well, we can't give you a contract because right. we need... So I've been kind of playing this game now for three years, but I don't, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think something needs to happen statewide uh, to help districts with special ed. I mean, it, it, they just can't keep uh, expecting the districts to, to deal with these spiraling costs with special ed. Uh, they, they really need to step up at the state level. So. I agree. I mean, I know Mass has some where they group schools together and they have, it's a way to save money. Um, New Hampshire, we don't have it. I'm not sure why. Maybe no one's brought it up. Maybe there's not enough population in certain areas. But if it were to work, we're in the part of the state that it could work. So that's something that Superintendent and I have discussed too. Um, probably a, a big job at some point, but... Okay, and the next group of accounts, which are the uh, supplies and materials, um, there's not a whole lot to say there. Um, there is a, a savings about 125,000 that's spread amongst almost everywhere. That number came out higher than I thought, which helped. Um, there, so I, I guess not too much more to say. I'm not sure why everyone didn't spend all their supply lines, but at this point. They're done. Okay, then the indirect costs, that's the uh, money we get uh, sort of back as income from the work we do on the grants. It's usually a percentage. It's an overhead percentage rate, usually around 2.5% or so. So this year we expect to get more. Uh, we budget this number carefully because we don't usually know what the percent is. We have a good sense of what our grants will be on a year-to-year -year basis but we don't really know what that overhead percentage rate that's calculated each year. Um, so, but it looks like this year we'll, we'll bring in more than we expected. Then there's the equipment line. There's 34,000 left there. Um, it's mostly in the software line, which tells me it's IT. Uh, IT budgets all the software. Most of the software, not all of it, most of it. And maybe there was some savings in some of the software um, this year versus what they had budgeted. And then the budget adjustments amount, you'll see that, that we sort of had a pickup there, 45,692. Um, so this year our athletics, 
the money we brought in the sort of pay for play thing was 183,000. Last year it was 185, so about the same. Uh, but the good news was in the facility rental, um, last year was about 160, this year was 192. So that sort of helped us out also. Um, so the facility rental over the last few years since we moved it from plan ops into central office, we've probably increased that by about 60, 70 percent. So it's just I think the process is managed better. Um, and we do have a new calendar coming out, which is hopefully going to be easier for the outside users to, to do. Yeah. So we made that purchase. And so all in all, if you look at that little box, it'll show 10,978 negative, but then you got to back out the net of those accounts that uh, the benefit accounts. So this is projecting to be a minus 105,000. So like I said, if this works out to be perfect, which it's not going to be perfect, um, but we would be a minus 105, so I'd have to take that 105 and use one of the, either the reserve for um, the uh, out of district or the reserve for the, um, well, the out of district special revenue fund to be exact, but or the retirement reserve. So I'm still okay with the 105, the other thing that happens, and it'll happen over the next month, is there's, if you look right above the box, there's a number 320,285. Those are all what we call the encumbrances. Those are all purchase orders that have been cut, but the items just haven't been received yet. So over the next few weeks, those items will come in. They're not going to be more than the purchase order. They could be less than the purchase order, or they might not show up at all. So that... 320 could potentially have a little bit of help towards that 100,000 also. So there's a lot right now, there's a lot of moving pieces. Um, most of the moving pieces are going to be, I think, helpful to reduce that number, except for the one out of district, which I think is going to go up. So in, kind of in my mind, I'm saying anything that's going to help me out here is out of district, the invoices that I don't have on here that probably haven't been approved yet, um, is probably going to get eaten up by that. But I think all in all, it, it will survive. But it's, once again, down to the four years in a row now, down to the wire like this. This year's worse than the other years. I don't think yeah. I, in July it had a negative number at this point. But like I said, it's not, there's not going to be a catastrophe. We'll get there. Um, but it'll be, it'll be interesting. And like I think the finance and ops in August is like the 14th or something like that. So by then, most of the numbers should be done. There'll be very little movement left after that. Thank you very much. That's, uh, that was an excellent, uh, excellent review. Um, I noticed that uh, it's not just the... Uh, Special out, out the out of tu the tuition out of district, but also the transportation services for special ed too. Are, it, 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 it's it's uh, it's very inefficient to take one student, move them thirty miles out, and have to yeah. go out with with a bus and go get them. And it's it's very inefficient to do that, you know. Whereas regular students, you're picking them up at bus stops, so it's more efficient. Yes, much you know. more. So it costs a heck of a lot more money, unfortunately. That's, that's what we're stuck with. So thank you very much for your expertise. I really appreciate that. Does anybody have any questions or, or comments? Ms. Um, Porter? I, I always come out of these with a better understanding. Thank you. I really appreciate the detail that you go into. So thank you. You're welcome. I, I think we're done unless anyone has any anything else. Um, we don't need to... We don't need to have any action on this uh, for the regular board. So, um, yes, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay, I second it. Um, on the motion to adjourn, uh, Ms. Porter? Yes. Ms. Oden? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. We are adjourned at 736. Thank you very much.